Good morning everyone, we are group 2 and today we will talk about the unit 2 which is leveling. So these are the topics to be covered by our report. First is the introduction to leveling in surveying. It is a branch of survey to measure a height of specified relative points to a datum. Second is the differential leveling, which is determining the difference in elevation between two or more points some distance apart. Third is the profile leveling, which is determining difference in elevation along a fixed line that is designated short measured interval. And lastly, the reciprocal leveling, which is determining the difference in elevation between two points when it is difficult to keep back sights and fore sights short and equal. So now let us know what leveling is. Leveling is a branch of survey to measure the height of specified relative points to a datum. It is the process of directly or indirectly measuring vertical distances to determine the elevation of points or their differences in elevations. So there are three types of leveling. These are the differential leveling, profile leveling, and the reciprocal leveling. So these types of leveling will be discussed next by the reporter. The importance of leveling in fieldwork first is that it helps the surveyor to make a counter map of land surface or sea surface. Second is it helps surveyors to lay a ground level on which they can build a building. And lastly, it helps pipe transport engineers to ensure appropriate slope of land that will allow smooth movement of liquid. So there are also objectives of leveling. So these are to enable students to have hands-on experience in setting and working with the instrument and collect the data of the relevant field work. Or to increase the student's knowledge and leveling procedure and to calculate the reduced level of each station. We will go over differential leveling or control level. It is a process of determining the difference in elevation between two or more points and distance apart. It is one basic field process and in surveying, using an optical level, we created a horizontal line of sight that intersects the rod and we then take rod reading to compute elevation differences. Now, I would like to go over some terms because we'll definitely hear this a lot of times as the topic progresses. On the left side of the illustration, we have the scale rod sitting over a benchmark abbreviated as BM, known as a fixed point of reference whose elevation is either known or assumed, and it is always the starting point. Backside, abbreviated as BS, is the reading on a rod held on a point of known or assumed elevation, the one that is sitting over the benchmark for this given example. This example shows the starting point is to the left of the leveling instrument, thus the BS will always be the reading on the left rod over any turning point. Height of instrument abbreviated as HI is exactly the height of the instrument. Now on to the right side and take the reading right over the turning point TP, which is an intervening point between two benchmarks. Foresight is the reading taken on rod held on a point whose elevation is to be determined. It's important to note that it's best to place the leveling instrument at equal distance between each pair of rods. This is done in order to eliminate errors of adjustment of instruments. But, what if I can see between those points? This scenario, the elevation distance is greater than the height of the tripod. Or what if the location is 5,000 feet apart? To overcome these obstacles, we perform differential leveling or a level circuit by measuring a series of elevation differences end to end. The rod person and instrument operator move simultaneously taking turns and moving forward a leap frog pattern. With a final foresight, there are finally enough measurements with which to compute the elevation of the new benchmark. In differential leveling, in order to make sure that the measurements are precise, the surveyors need to measure twice and count once to avoid blunders. There will be a forward run and a reverse run to make sure that the results match closely. If there's a big discrepancy, then there's blunders. Remember, error isn't equal to mistake. 
as error describes the natural random variation in repeated measurements results. However, mistakes is equal to blunders. For instance, simply misread the level rod, then that will greatly affect the computation. Let's have a look at this table. The backside and foreside were already put into note. What is left for us to fill in this table is the height of the instrument and the elevation. Do not fret, this topic is really easy as 1, 2, 3. We only have to utilize this equation hi equals elevation plus bs and elevation equals hi minus fs. For bm, let's solve for hi first. Using the equation hi equals to elevation that is 110 in this case plus bs which is 3.2 that will be 113.2 now we already have the hi we can now solve for the following elevation at elevation 0 plus 0 0 that will be hi is 113.2 minus the foresight of elevation 0 plus 0 0 6.6 .6 equals 106.6 .6. next at elevation 0 plus 50 hi is still 113.2 minus foresight of elevation 0 plus 50 which is 8.4 we will have 104.8 last at elevation turning point 1 hi is 113.2 subtracted by the foresight of elevation turning point 1 10.2 you have 103.0 proceeding to turning point 1 using the hi equation we know that the elevation for turning point 1 is 103.0 note that we will no longer use the benchmark elevation as each turning point will have a new elevation again hi equals elevation 103.0 added by the back side 4.3 you have a new hi of 107.3 computing for elevation at elevation 1 plus 50 hi is 107.3 minus elevation 1.1 plus 50 foresight of 2.3 equals 105.0 lastly at elevation 2 plus 0, 0 hi is 107.3 minus foresight of elevation 2 plus 0, 0 which is 4.5 you will have 102.8 nice and that's how you compute with respect to differential leveling Profile leveling. It is the process of determining difference in elevation along a fixed line at a designated short measured intervals. The main difference between differential leveling and profile leveling is the number of foresights taken from each set of instrument. Here is the definition of terms. Profile. A curved line which graphically portrays the intersection of vertical plane with the surface of the earth and the horizontal distances between the points along a surveyed line. Stationing, a numerical designation given in terms of horizontal distance at any point along a profile line is away from the starting point. Full stations, these are points established along the profile level route at uniformly measured distances. Plus stations, any intermediate point established along a profile level mostly for location of critical points. Intermediate foresight are also known as ground road readings. These are taken along the center line of the proposed project to provide accurate presentation of the ground surface. And now we have the sample problem. From the given profile leveling notes, compute the A, elevation at each station, B, difference in elevation between 0 plus 0, 040 and 0 plus 180. How do we get the height of instrument? We can get the height of instrument by simply adding the elevation to back side, to which we have 200M plus 1.285 is equal to 201.285. And how do we get the elevation? We can get the elevation by simply subtracting the height of instrument to the intermediate foresight, which we have 201.285 minus 2.345. This is equal to 198.940. Now how do we get the elevation with foresight? As you can see here, the data has changed and it has now a turning point. 
This only means that you have transferred to a different instrument position. This is exactly why we need to remember the foresight. Because with foresight, we can compute the elevation of the station. So with the same height of the instrument, minus the foresight of turning point 1, in which we have 201.285 minus 0 0.764 is equal to 200.521. And this is the final answers from the given table for A. So now let's proceed to B. The difference in elevation between the 0 plus 0 040 and 0 plus 180. As you can see by the given table, 0 plus 0 040 is equal to 199.984 and 0 plus 180 is equal to 201.273. To solve this, we just have to subtract the smaller to the bigger. So, we have 201.273 minus 199.984 is equal to 1.289. And there you have it. Reciprocal leveling. It is employed to determine the difference in elevation between two points when it is difficult or impossible to keep back sides and fore sides short and equal. So why do we use reciprocal leveling? Because it helps in compensating for the error due to curvature and refraction, and also the line of collimation errors in surveying. It is one of the best methods to eliminate curvature and refraction errors. In reciprocal leveling, the level is set up on both sides of the levels. So when there is an obstacle between two stations, such that the instrument cannot be set up between two stations, reciprocal leveling is performed. In this process, the level is set up at one of the two stations and staff readings are taken on both stations. The instrument is then changed to the other station and the readings are taken on both stations again. So for example, from point A to point B. The true difference in elevation is then given by the average of the two apparent difference in elevation. Therefore, station A and station B's readings are added and then divided by two. To further understand, we have an example or illustration. Here, let A and B the points of observations, okay? At first, the level is set at a point near A, and the staff readings are taken on both A and B. Remember, at point, remember that at point A and B, they are taken at station A. Then, the instrument is set at a point near B, and the staff readings are taken again on both A and B. Okay? So then let's have a sample problem. Problem based on reciprocal leveling. The following notes refer to reciprocal level when taken with one level. So instrument at near station P has a staff readings of P 1.824 and station Q is 2.748. Instrument at near station Q has a staff readings on P with 0.928 and Q is 1.606 and the distance between P and Q is 1010 meters. RL or reciprocal leveling of P is 126.386 meters. So we're gonna find the following. A, true RL of Q. B, the combined correction for curvature and refraction. C, the angular error and the collimation adjustment of the instrument. So let's solve the problem. When the instrument is at P, apparent difference in the elevation is given by 2.748, which is the staff readings on Q, minus 1.824, which is the staff readings on P. Sub subtract both of them, you're gonna have 0.924 meters. And 
In this case, P is higher than Q. When the instrument is at Q, the apparent difference in the elevation is given by 1.606, which is again the staff readings on Q, minus 0.928, the staff readings on P. And you're going to have an answer of 0.678 meters. In this case, again, P is higher than Q because RL of P was 126.386 meters. So P is higher than Q. And let's move on with a true difference in elevation. You add both apparent differences on both P and Q in the elevation divided by 2. And that is your answer, 0 0.801. So let's proceed to letter A, to RL of Q. So it's given by RL of P minus true difference in elevation. So you're just going to sub substitute both of them. RL of P was 126.386 and the true difference in elevation was 0 0.801. And you're going to have an answer of 125.585 meters. Let's proceed with letter B. Combined correction for curvature in refraction is given by the formula of curvature, which is 6 divided by 7 multiplied by d squared over 2r. So d, which is the distance in r, which is the radius of earth. It is the radius of earth, which is 6,370 kilometers and kilometers we're going to change it into meters so that's why we have 10 to the power of 3. So use your calculators and you're going to have 0 0.0686 meters. Okay and that is our curvature okay remember that. Okay let's proceed with letter C. We're almost done. Angular error in the collimation of the instrument when the instrument is at P. So the answer before was 0.924 meters, which is the apparent difference in elevation. And our true difference in elevation was 0 0.801 meters. Therefore, error in staff reading is given by the difference of apparent difference minus the true difference. So apparent difference was 0.924 minus two difference which was 0 0.801 and you're gonna have 0.123 meters however this error is a combination of error due to curvature refraction and collimation hence error due to collimation which is given by 0 0.123 minus 0 0.0686 1 2, 3, that was the combination error in staff reading and 0.0686 was the curvature, okay? And you're going to have an answer of 0.0544 meters in a distance of 1,010 meters. Therefore, angular error of collimation, which is given by arc tan multiplied by the error due to collimation divided by the distance, which was 1,010 meters. And you're going to use your calculator and you're going to have 11.11. .11. And that is our angular error of collimation. Therefore, let's proceed with part two.